Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another episode of Levitation, the Sunday series. And today we got a deep but good one. So let's buckle up. What if everything you wanted meant nothing? I know, I know. Where are you going with this? Hold on. What if everything you worked for, everything you fought for, everything you neglected relationships for, everything that you've hurt people for, everything that some people have killed for, would some have neglected children for? Would some have threw away gifts and passions for? What if all that was for nothing? Almost all the time, the things that we put that kind of effort towards is worldly possessions. It's the money, the riches, the fame, the power, the respect, the women, the sex, the life, the legacy. And a lot of times, the person that we use to justify us pursuing those things is somebody in the Bible. It's somebody who was considered the wisest man by God. And that's Solomon. Oh, Solomon had many wives. He had many concubines. And God allowed it. So it can't really be wrong, right? He had all the riches and the fame. And he was considered the wisest man. So it can't be wrong to want those things. We oftentimes think that because he was considered the wisest man, his actions were wise. Let's look at scripture. First Kings chapter three, starting at verse five, it says, that night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and God said, what do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by themselves is able to govern this great people of your? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom, in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or death of your enemies, I will give you what you ask for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart so as no one else has had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. Now the common misconception is that when Solomon prayed and asked for wisdom and when God acknowledged that he was pleased that he asked for that, that all all the wisdom that Solomon had was given to Solomon in that moment. Now Solomon was a little boy when he asked this. One thing that we must do when reading scripture is recognize the context and the setting of the actual story and when it was written. When referring to the wisdom that Solomon had, it's referred to in the past tense. So whoever wrote 1 Kings documented this after Solomon had passed. So when they were referring to the wisdom that Solomon had, they were referring to the wisdom that he had for the length of his life. So that infers that he grew in wisdom. Even Jesus, the Bible says that he grew in wisdom. So if Solomon grew in wisdom, that means Solomon didn't always make the wisest decision. Even so that he says it. Let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, starting at verse 1. These are the words of the teacher, King David's son, who ruled in Jerusalem. Solomon was David's son who, who got the throne after David died. He said, these are the words of the teacher, King David's son, who ruled in Jerusalem. Everything is meaningless, says the teacher. Completely meaningless. Look, he said, nothing under the sun is truly new. I, the teacher, was king of Israel and I lived in Jerusalem. I devoted myself to search for understanding and to explore lord by wisdom everything being done under heaven i soon discovered i observe everything going on under the sun and really it is all meaningless like chasing the wind i said to myself look i am wiser than any of the kings who ruled in jerusalem before me i have greater wisdom and knowledge than any of them so i set out to learn everything from wisdom to madness and folly but i learned firsthand that pursuing all this is like chasing the wind the greater my wisdom the greater my grief to increase knowledge only increases sorrow. So this is Solomon saying, I searched and I sought out to get gain as much knowledge and wisdom as I can possibly get. And I got it. And the conclusion is, it's all meaningless. Let's go to chapter two. I said to myself, come, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things in life. But I found that this too was meaningless. I also tried to find meaning by building huge homes for myself and by planting beautiful vineyards. I collected great sums of silver and gold, the treasure of many kings and provinces. I hired wonderful singers, both men and women, and I had many beautiful concubines. I had everything a man could desire. So I became greater than all who had lived in Jerusalem before me, and my wisdom never failed me. Anything I wanted, I would take. I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure in hard 
hard work, a reward for all my labor. But as I look at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless. Like chasing the wind, there was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. The book of Ecclesiastes is believed to be written at the end of Solomon's life. And he's given his conclusion of life. And everything that we attribute to him so far, the wisdom, the fame, the riches, the pleasure, the many wives, the homes. In the first two chapters of Ecclesiastes, he says it is worth nothing. It's pointless. The very last verses in that book in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it says, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. The wisest man says, the only thing that matters in life is obeying God. In that whole book, Solomon seemed depressed. He even said, the more knowledge I gain, that's the more grief I experience. And I thought to myself, Solomon seemed to have had a good life. He had the women, he had the money, he had the, the fame. Why he depressed? And then it clicked. Would have God allowed Solomon to experience the women, the fame, experience the riches, experience all the things that us humans tend to strive for? Would have God allowed him to experience all of that? For him to see that none of it mattered. And he became the wisest man because God knew that he was going to come to the conclusion that none of it mattered at the end. The same person that we typically use as an excuse to justify some of the things that we want and desire and chase after. It's the same person that tells us that it's meaningless. How convenient that we often ignore his conclusion. At the end of his life, we see a sad person. A person who seems to think that he has wasted majority of his time on earth. The reason his life is an example to us is for us not to make the same mistake. We see the result at the end of the life. He don't seem fulfilled, but it seems to be regret. What if his life is an example for us not to be regretful at the end of our lives? God is showing us that it all leads to regret because it don't matter. But the only thing that matters is obedience to God. We got a decision to make. Are we going to be wise and learn from the wisest person's conclusion of life? Or are we going to live a meaningless life chasing after the things that he had? Your decision determines your wisdom. This is Levitation where we're reaching our highest potential. Stay blessed.